This is Bounty, the Atari Basic Podcast. Even just, you know, running tight machine language loops, uh, it barely could keep up with that kind of rate and pull in samples from the scan lines. That same signature from the very first scan, literally the very first scan that was done by the prototype initial product, literally that same image was used to sign the company's checks for half a dozen years. This is an interview episode of Antic, the Atari 8-Bit Podcast. I'm Kevin Savitz. Dave Pratt was founder of Digital Vision, the company that made computerized for the Apple II, Commodore 64, and Atari 8-bit computers. Computerize was a slow-scan video digitizer that plugged into the joystick port on the Atari version. You'd connect a video camera or VCR into the computerized box, and software on your computer would create a black and white or grayscale version of the image on the computer screen. This interview took place October 12th, 2015. After we did this interview, Dave set up a nice website with a history of digital vision and photographs of the early products at www.digital-vision.inc.com. You can check the show notes at ataripodcast.com for a link there. So I would like to know, let's start before the beginning of, of digital vision. Tell me the story before the story about how you got to be, uh, interested in in computer computers and video digita- digitizing and kind of give me the, the prehistory please I shall it's uh, here, here's the story so um, I uh, owned an Apple II computer and um, I had written the program in it like a lot of people did to um, you know uh, balance your checkbook and categorize expenses and do all that kind of stuff for you know home personal finance and it printed my checks out and um, it did everything except sign my checks. And so I started wondering, well, how I can, how can I get it to do that? And then I kind of came up with an idea of being able to point a uh, video camera at my signature and um, somehow getting that into the computer and then I'd have it and it would sign the checks. So came up with this circuit and some software to do that. And, um, and it worked and it plugged, it, uh, it plugged into the Apple II's game port. Um, and when I got it all done, I got my signature all scanned and everything and then started putting my checks with it. Um, I realized that, you know, this could be a product and, um, the parts cost was pretty low. And so, um, I went through the numbers and, um, uh, it, it looked like it looked like it should work, and so um, I quit my job and I um, took a little bit of office space and I hired an assistant and started building these video capture gadgets for Apple Twos. So, did you design and, this thing yourself? Yeah, I mean, I'm an engineer by background, um, and so I mean, it was uh, it's a uh, well, the, well, as you recall, what uh, what computerized um, was at least in the early going um, was a, not a frame grabber, but it was a slow scan digitizer. Um, it would it would take several seconds to scan an image, which for my for scanning my signature is perfectly fine. Um, and um, and the the way it did it, not to give away any trade secrets. Um, you know, the, uh, these processors back then were, were by today's standards, you know, c- crawled, um, and so could not accomplish much in a given period of time. And so there's no way you could get the computer to bring in a whole frames worth of video information. So what I did was I took, um, one sample off of each scan line and then, um, and I could do that, do a, a whole a columns worth of pixels, um, I could capture that in real time, but then, um, and then I would slide it over just a little bit and could capture the next column over and keep sliding over until I got enough columns to fill the entire frame. So, um, I could, I got a row of pixels 
uh, every 60th of a second. And then depending on how many columns I wanted, um, typically 640 or 320, um, uh, was the, took, you know, dictated the amount of time that, that it took to complete the whole scan, which worked out to be like six seconds to do um, to do a scan of a video signal, which means, of course, that the signal has to be stationary. Either a camera pointed at something, video camera pointed at something, or um, uh, VCR on pause, but that did require that the VCR has a uh, significant enough, uh, stable enough freeze frame capability. And the initial product, uh, forget about color. <laughs> But forget even about forget even about grayscale. The the initial product um, captured an image that was black or white, not black and white, black or white. <laughs> it was it was either above a certain threshold or below a certain threshold. And if it was above the threshold, it was white, and if it was below, it was black. And so to do a signature, um, it would take the uh, signal from the video camera and decide whether each one of the elements was above or below a certain threshold and um, call it black or white. Now this perfectly matched the computers of the day. Um, the original Apple II had no shades of gray. You never forget about color. Um, the, the early PCs had no shades of gray because they were more business oriented anyway. Um, but then a little bit later, uh, the uh, Atari, 8-bit Atari came along, the uh, Commodores, came along and they had a little bit better graphics capability. <laughs> um, and so um, what I was able to do was to take the, the product, which basically thresholded the video and by changing the threshold and using multiple scans, I could get something like eight shades of gray. And uh, the Atari actually was a good match for that because it could do eight shades of gray. And of those three computers, the Apple II, Commodore 64, 128, and the Atari, what were they, 400, 800? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the Ataris gave the best image because they could do those shades, those shades of gray. Um, and, uh, but the way it was done was by taking multiple scans. So now we're talking, you know, you know eight times... Six seconds, <laughs> right? You know, upwards of a minute, of upwards of a minute to do a full uh, scan of an image with eight shades of gray. Um, you know, there were other products out there to do uh, it faster and with more shades of gray, and later on with color, but they cost a whole lot more money. <laughs> uh, and you know, that was kind of our goal: is to is to is to produce something that um that everybody could afford right and, and so the uh, at least the atari version of uh computerized cost 129 dollars and 95 cents right <laughs> exactly right yeah uh, so uh, what do they cost and, to produce i mean, I mean I don't, what's the value of the parts in there <laughs> value of the parts was around 16 dollars uh -huh. nice <laughs> but you know that's not atypical um, sure, sure. You know, there's, there, there are a lot more expensive expenses, you know, that go into a product um, than the, the cost of, of the parts, the packaging, the marketing, you know, the overhead of uh, running, you know, office and lab space, sure. uh, insurance, <laughs> going to trade shows, and yeah, yeah. all of that. No, no, I'm not criticizing. I was just, you know, curious. No, that's what it, that's what it was. And that's what inspired me to... Um, to turn it into a product because those numbers work. Did you, you turn, were you building these things by hand? Did you find a factory somewhere? Uh, the initial ones, I, I, I love telling this. The, um, so I initially uh, took on uh, a suite of two offices and my um, assistant um, was in one and I was in the other. The, I was my, I had a desk and a table for a lab bench. Mm hmm and um, she had the desk where she would answer the phone, um, do various office tasks, and in between phone calls and whatever else, solder together the first hundred, at least, <laughs> <laughs> versions, versions of the Apple II product. 
Wow. <laughs> nice. After that, um, I want to see. I want to um, see. The, I want to see the uh, the the job listing for that. Like, you need to be able to type at fifty, you know, eighty words mm -hmm. a minute and answer phones and know how to solder. <laughs> yep, so soldering skills. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I may not have told I may not have told her that that was part of the <laughs> part of the test, but uh, she took it. And incidentally, this same woman um, stayed with the company all the way through and became a, an excellent office manager. And she was uh, my right hand person um, all the way through, and um, so you know it worked. <laughs> nice. All right, so I interrupted you. You were going to tell me a story about something, and I interrupted you. Um, uh, let's, hmm, so she was soldering at her maybe, desk between answering phone calls. Oh, that may have been that may have been it. Just the fact, just the fact that, just the just the fact that um, you know she she the same person uh, uh, answered the answered the phone, you know, sent out mailings, prepared you know advertising literature, uh, and soldered the parts together. <laughs> so okay, after the first hundred or so. You found a facility to to build these. Yeah, I mean, I um, you know, I I had worked for a company prior to leaving and starting Digital Vision um, that uh, was uh, uh, made uh, array digital array signal processors and um, uh, hired you know bolts to be made, and so I contacted the same person and started having them um, build our uh, products and um they also stayed with us for a good dozen years um you know doing the second all the way, starting with the second hundred <laughs> apple II <laughs> uh products um all the way through the end uh, which was 12 14 years later yeah nice and so i mean they were big and they were big enough that they could not handle whatever Volume we threw at them. So, how long were you churning out Apple II units before you decided to go with Commodore or Atari or whatever came next? Well, you know, I was think I was thinking last night. I couldn't quite remember the time frame. Um, Digital Vision started in 1984, and um, the second product was Commodore. The third was Atari, and I um, I have in my basement that I haven't looked at for years and years. Um, what we call our digital vision archive box. And so I um, dug it up this morning <laughs> <laughs> and it has examples of um, several of the products. I thought, I thought maybe all of them, but I could not find um, an 8-bit Atari version on, in there, but I did find the owner's manual. <laughs> oh, nice. And the owner's manual is dated 1985. So, um, and it was the third of the versions, so um, they're they're very similar. Uh, the basic architecture is the same. Um, the uh, Apple II version plugged into the Apple II's game port. Mm -hmm. The uh, Commodore version plugged into there was a parallel port on the side of the Commodore box, which I think was mainly a printer port. Mm -hmm. And in uh, um, for some reason, for the Atari, I used the two controller connectors. Right. The and it must, have, it, it must have been that the signals available on the, um, on the, the, that there weren't enough signals available on one of the connectors to make it, to make, to be able to connect it with just one. So I had to use two of them. Hmm. Either that or I got a little bit better performance by using two or something like that. But anyway, um, but inside the box, with the exception of the interface to the outside world, uh, the inside the box was pretty much the same. Interesting. Just the connector out from the box uh, would be different. Yeah, and software. Sure. Another thing that made another thing that made this possible is, I mean, uh, even to take only one pixel per scan line uh, meant that the processor had to, uh, you know, scan lines go. Uh, occur every like 60 microseconds or so. And that's not that many instructions for, what was the processor? The 6502? Yes. For the processor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, that's not that much time. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so it was, in, even just, you know, running ex tight machine language loops, uh, it 
barely could keep up with that kind of rate and pull in samples from the scan lines, but it did. Um, so uh, the, so the software running um, was an integral part of, of the products, no doubt about it. Um, I mean, the more you can put, the more burden you can put on the software, the less, um, and less on the hardware, the less the recurring costs are. Right, sure. Because they're, they're in the hardware. So, um, uh, so the, the software certainly was different. Um, at the lowest level, not too much different because uh, um, it was pulling in the, the samples and putting them somewhere in memory. But um, at a higher level, namely the user interface, you know, things were different uh, between the, the three computers. Did you write the software yourself, too? Yes, back then I did. I did well, everything. You did it all. <laughs> all the technical. Yeah. The family um, turned out to be, a, uh, I'm sorry, the company turned out to be a family-owned business. Um, my brother... Um, who um, also had an engineering degree, although it was chemical engineering, <laughs> um, uh, joined me at the end of 1984, only about six months into the into the source. And then my wife, who um, also had a technical background um, and also a financial background, um, joined me in early 1986. And so uh, um, it was it was a family owned business um and the, the the business never grew very large we didn't want to we didn't we we didn't want to bring in um outside funding we didn't want to go for venture capital we didn't want to go i've seen it happen i was involved <laughs> in the past um didn't want to go that route and so i'm sure you know there's no question that we you know limited the rate at which we grew but you know it worked for us and it was a happy experience all the way through <laughs> and our company, which grew to be somewhere around 13 or 14 employees total. Um, it was, it was, it was like a family. It was, it really was, um, you know, like working with, uh, from, uh, in a good sense. <laughs> oh, families don't have to <laughs> but, Um, uh, it, it really was, um, yeah, a great bunch of people and we were all kind of in it together. And so, it was just a, a nice experience that lasted, especially in the technical world, quite a lot of years. Did it remain a family-owned business? I know it went it went on for the company um, survived much longer than than the Atari years, and you were making eventually making PC-based frame grabbers and stuff. Was it always a family business? That's right. Um, the yeah af- nice. after the. Um, Let's see. The the the, the eight bit Atari was the, was the third Atari product, and around that time, we hired a technician who um, was uh, a, an Atari guy, but uh, he was getting into um, the Atari ST, mm-hmm. and um, and so uh, and he convinced us that he could you know write some that he had written code and that he could write some code to run on, on an Atari ST, and we, and we said, okay, we'll let you do that as long as you do a Macintosh version for us too, because um, they also share the same processor, Macs and Atari STs. So that was, you know, that was a pretty right. relatively straightforward carryover between the two there. And um, as you might expect, we sold a lot more of the Macintosh product than the Atari ST products. I can imagine. Um, just because of, just because of numbers. Involved. Um, uh, so you know, and then after that, I don't, I don't actually remember the relative timing, but um, we uh, had to do an IBM PC version, of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> they, they were getting rather ubiquitous, and so we did. Um, and I actually hired a guy that I knew who um, who was a PC programmer, and he did this software for us. Um, and in terms of the, uh, the low level processing, uh, he did a fine job at that. But I remember the first review of that product that we got in one of the PC magazines, maybe PC magazine. Um, the reviewer said something like, um, 
you know, I love the product. It works great. Does everything it says, but the uh, stuff, but the, uh, the the user interface reminds me of my first basic program. <laughs> <laughs> and and he was right. <laughs> it did <laughs> because the the guy he just didn't have a feel for stuff like that. So that made me <laughs> learn how to program a PC. <laughs> Much to my I know, I know. <laughs> but hey, it, it paid in the end. Good. And then uh, color versions came along, of course. Mm-hmm. You know, our products um, just kind of evolved along with the graphics capability of the computers. Um, you know, the, the, the IBM PC, um, its VGA graphics had a couple different modes. The ones that gave you the best images could do um, 256 colors on the screen at any given time, but mm-hmm. with a res- resolution of 320 by 200. I remember thinking and saying at the time, you know, does it ever have to get any better than this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not going to get better than that. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, <laughs> times have changed. Yeah, yeah. I saw but, um, I saw a, gra- a graphic recently, and it was it was kind of a, a relative graphic of of a current Mac Retina screen with in the middle was a little dot, which was the relative size of the original Macintosh screen. <laughs> it's just like a little speck yeah. in the middle. You know, you could just see yeah. like it's you could fit like you know a million of them inside or something. I believe uh, it. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, since since we're we're moving forward, we're gonna jump back in a minute. But how? So okay. you're, you're you're coming out with um, PC based frame grabbers, and uh, the company is no no longer exists now. Correct? I mean, Digital Vision is, is shut. That's right. So That's how, right. How did it come um, to an end? <laughs> Sorry, now we're jumping to the end. <laughs> well, oh, is there more in the middle? I mean, uh, I'm I'm, oh, well, no, I'm we're, sure we're, we'll we're jumping to the end, and we're gonna go back. Um, so I'm just trying to. <laughs> all right. Um, Let's see. It got to be the uh, early to mid '90s, and we were starting to see things happen. We, meaning my family members and I, um, we're starting to see things happening. You know, a lot of competition from Asia. Um, uh, just uh, you know, a digital cameras starting to come on the scene. You know, just a, a, a lot. A lot was happening. And we thought it might be time to, you know, look for a uh, buyer for the company. <laughs> and and we, we had set a goal to retire at age 50 and, um, and, um, knew it. So we, um, we, we found buyers and we found, um, it was a, it turned out to be a pair of gentlemen. One it was a VP of operations at Polaroid corporation. And another one came from the investment banking community. And um, they pulled together some resources from their friends and um, and uh, took over the company from us slowly. It was kind of gradually. We stayed on and helped them make the transition for quite a while. Um, but then kind of the things that we saw, sort of saw coming kind of came to happen. And, um, you know, the... the Sales started flattening out and so on, and they ended up selling um, the company to essentially a competitor on the PC side, um, which, off, which often happens. And they, the competitor, basically took the um, the better the, the better I don't know, won't say better products, the products that were selling the fastest of ours, and scrapped the rest and uh, um, closed down. <laughs> well. That was after a good long run. It was after a long run of 13 or 14 years, I guess. Sounds like you got out at the right time. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) Okay, going back to the Atari Commodore Apple days. um, Yeah. I have some some questions there. So I was rereading reviews of Computerize, and one of the criticisms that I saw of the software was that it would capture an image and then save it, and that was about all it could do. It couldn't manipulated in any way and there was I think a quote from you saying something to the effect of 
oh, the users are going to come up with things that we haven't even thought of, and they're going to create this great software and do amazing things with it. And so I'm wondering, did you did users create uh, tools for computerize that you hadn't even considered? Well, I mean, uh, I, I'm surprised I, I, I said exactly that. I think my what I, what I would have more said was that um, there already existed software out there that would make good use of the images that we captured. I know that um, um, on the on the Commodore side, um, there were a couple of good paint programs. One was called, in fact, um, in fact, what got me thinking about the Commodore was that one of our distributors um, um, was selling at the time more Commodore equipment than Apple II equipment. And, um, and so it convinced us to do it. And, the, and they also represented a, uh, a product called FlexiDraw, which was a light pen kind of thing that worked on the Com- Commodore screen. And FlexiDraw draw was a paint program uh, combined with the, with the pen. Um, and there were also paint programs you'll have to <laughs> provide me with, refresh my memory, paint programs on the, Atari, on the Atari side. And so um, what, what, we, what our thinking was that we would draw the line, we would capture the images for you and save them to disk. And, then, um, and some people just want to print them out. Some people would bring them into, for example, print shop. Isn't that the name of it? Yes. yes. Print shop. Um, and um, to you know, create cards and things of that nature. And then um, to do any sort of manipulation with them, um, that's what the paint programs were for. And I guess we kind of thought that we'd be, you know, trying to reinvent the wheel if we were to come up with, um, uh, you know, a, a paint program or something like that of our own. I mean, I can certainly understand the I can certainly understand the criticism. I mean, it would be nice to have everything in one package. I, you know, I, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> I found a quote from you from June 1987, where you said, We would have brought out the Atari conversion much sooner if we realized how fast sales would take off compared to the early com- the earlier Commodore and Apple II editions. Atari users seem to be heavily into graphics. So, yeah. given that, I'm wondering about the if you can give me an idea about the, the relative sales for the, those, those three different platforms. Oh, um, um, Apple II by far was the biggest seller. Mm-hmm. Um, for one thing, we we did a um, we penetrated the education market to quite a great degree with that product. Um, uh, we a lot of the trade shows that we did weren't necessarily computer shows, but were uh, educa- educational shows. Oh. And so, I, I, back in the early going there, I, mean, I would say that almost half of the trade shows that we did were uh, education shows. And, uh, you know, the educators were definitely using the Apple products then. So you're selling these to schools so, for use in labs or or, or what? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, labs are art departments. Um, uh, a lot of schools, they would buy them on the overall general school budget and then make them available to the different teachers, the different classrooms um, for, for, I'm not sure what, <laughs> um, ex- experimenting. And, uh, I mean, it's a, as opposed to a lot of products, you know, like, you know, you, uh, you know, you take on the other end of the extreme is like dizzy calc, you know, a spreadsheet. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you know, it's it's a fun and it's a very visual kind of thing and it's a perfect thing to um, to go to any type of trade show with because you're there in your um, trade show booth with a camera on a tripod you know set up and people walk by and you just can't scan there in the early days of course they had to hold still for six seconds right but you'd um, you'd scan their their image and um, put it up on the screen or um, you know, print it out on a printer. And like um, compared with a lot of things that were pe- that people were trying to um, market for computers um, because it was so visual. Um, it was just a natural for that kind of environment. Sure. Yeah. So did you ever, it's just kind of a, I mean, it's just kind of a fun product for people to have. Um, yeah. 
for all kinds of things. Absolutely. So did you end up using it to sign your checks? Absolutely. And in fact, I uh, wrote a version of that, that initial financial software for the company, and the uh-huh. company used it for, I'm going to say, six or seven years <laughs> um, before we actually went out and bought a full-blown <laughs> accounting system, <laughs> $5,000 or something. Um, and for, for five or six years, it, that same signature from the very first scan, literally the very first scan that was done by the prototype initial product, <laughs> literally that same image was used to sign the company's checks for half a dozen years. <laughs> nice. Amazing. I think I still got that file somewhere on, on my uh, computer. <laughs> I'm sure I, I'm sure I do. Nice. I'm sure the file format. The file format. Although I can't remember what the file format was on the Apple II. I mean, um, Commodore, Commodore was uh, you know GIF files, and they're still around. All right, so what's in that box? You said you found a box in the basement. I want to know what's in it and oh. and what needs to be scanned and digitized and, and saved for, for history. Well, I I have to admit that um, since I dug the box, box up, my, my wife, by the way, uh, still with me, <laughs> also known as the Chief Financial Officer and uh, VP of Sales, I think, um, <laughs> for Digital Vision, um, uh, we went. We kind of, you know, quickly went through it together because we didn't have a whole lot of time, and um, we came to the same conclusion: we've got to scan this stuff. There's, there's a lot of good stuff. A lot of photos of the, of the company in the, in the. Um, we moved twice, by the way. The company moved from our tool offices um, in Needham, Massachusetts, to um, we actually bought a small building, freestanding building. Um, in uh, Dedham, Massachusetts, but we outgrew that and took some regular commercial office space um, also in Dedham, Massachusetts. So we did those. Uh, we moved twice since the, the start. Um, and so there's, you know, there's a lot of photos of the company in all, all three locations. <laughs> and, um, uh, I'm pretty sure I've got examples of all the product li- the literature in there. Oh, nice. I, and, um, and um, several of the physical products, uh, and um, I, there's one, uh, there's, there's one. I forget what model of computerized, but it was. I don't remember which one was. One of the earlier ones is the one like you're familiar with, with in the black box, um, that uh, came back as un- uh, undelivered by UPS. And the reason it was undelivered because was, was because the, the UPS truck had literally run run over the package <laughs> and it was and, and it was like it was flat as a pancake and um they we did get credit for that but they um we, we kept the, that package unopened <laughs> <laughs> still have it nice but yeah um yeah you're right i'm going to um i'm going to scan all that stuff take photos of all things and um and put it up on the website. Yeah, if uh, if you do that, I would super appreciate it, and I will link to that from the uh, interview. And if you don't have time or you know, the interest, I, you can lend them to me. I will scan it. I've got two scanners on my desk, and I can take care of it and get, <laughs> get it all back to you. Um, yeah, because the uh, the retro computing community would certainly love to see the you know the, the manuals and the pictures of of uh, the your offices and that sort of thing. That's super cool. Yeah. Yeah, well, and you know, so would I. Um, I mean, I know I, I I've known all along that it's been down there, but um, uh, literally, it's, it's the first time in years since I've gotten it out and looked at it, and I only gave it a cursory glance so far. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, that must be the. I mean, I must not have even. Um, really, um, these days, websites uh, are one of the one of the things that occupy a large amount of my time. And so for me to do that <laughs> would be a piece of cake. Cool. Awesome. And if you, uh, if you find any floppy disks with, you know, any media, I, I can transfer those to modern computers. Um, you know, say, say you found oh, okay. a, a, say you found a disk of the source code or something. Um, that's easy enough. To, yeah. So, okay.
Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't think I even have a five and a quarter inch drive um, in the house here anywhere. <laughs> never mind which. Never mind which computer it might right. be for. Yeah. So yeah, if you find it, let me know. Uh, what haven't I asked you that I should have? No. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It does seem like we've covered kind of most everything. Let me think. Let me think. Uh, well, I guess one thing is that the um, we actually, the, the company um, went in a slightly different direction about halfway through our exist, existence in terms of, um, you know, computerized. Well, oh, the name computerized, by the way, mm-hmm. <laughs> was a, a pun that was um, given to me by an engineer, as you might expect, um, as a gift, <laughs> uh, an engineer who I was work- working with at the time when I, <laughs> when I left my job to start the company. And, um, you know, I was, you know, telling a few of my friends, uh, you know, what I was doing. And, um, and the guy came into my office one day and said, I got a name for your product. And he said, well, what's that? <laughs> Computerize. E-Y-E-S, get it? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so it stuck. <laughs> and the, the only problem we had with that is that uh, you had to be careful with the graphics in, because if you just put, sort of spell it out, um, it could be read as like, you know, computer ES or something like that, you know. So you have to differentiate the uh, the eyes from the computer and stuff. So, um, but... Um, what led me to that was the fact that um, we developed another line of products that um, uh, come the reverse. Instead of uh, capturing video into a computer, um, we would uh, take anything that was on the computer screen and send it out to um, a TV or a VCR. Um, now, the earlier computers, um, our uh, Atari's and Commodore's and Apple II's, uh, talk to TV sets anyway. That's how they, dis- that's that the TV sets were their display. But once um, the IBM PC came along, for example, there was no such thing. And, you know, they all had always had their, um, their own, you know, monitors, VGA monitors and so on. And, um, uh, you know, the same with other computers that came after that, because after all, the, the res- resolution you can get on a TV screen is, is limited for computer use. So, um, but there's still, um, and so you could take the, the signal from your Atari, you've probably done it, um, and send it to a tape recorder and tape it. But you couldn't do that with the later computers, but there was still a need to do that among some people. And so we um, came up with a line of call, uh, products called Televise. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> yeah, um, E-Y-E-S, that, um, again, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that um, that uh, as I said, did, did the opposite would take you know, like a VGA um, computer screen or what's on your Macintosh or Atari ST and send it out to as send it out as a video signal that could be displayed on a regular TV set or um, recorded on a VCR. And there were several models of that. Some of them got kind of fancy that um, um, that included um, the ability to like overlay graphics on top of the on mm-hmm. top of the. Um, you could do the, you know, the the rod like the Roger Roger Rabbit effect. Mm-hmm. Cool. That, that was a whole second product line. Nice. All right. So you told me you created this thing and it worked right out of the box and everything was fine and and you created the Apple version. I, I feel like there there must have been. I want a story of um, a problem that you had coming along, you know, in creating the, these these eight bit products. There there must have been something that didn't work right, or a, a bad review, or it, so, tell me something that was frustrating, or or something uh, when you were during that time. Huh? Maybe I've suppressed all of Um. I mean, obviously the reviews would vary. Um, generally speaking, you know, um, the, the people felt that they were a good value for um, for the money, and um, they certainly were um, an unusual 
different sort of product. Um, ah, what that happened? Worse than the truck running over the. <laughs> I don't know. It was a good ride. It was it was a really good ride. I mean, we um, we, we to start the company, we took out a, a line of we. I, I I went around with a with a. Uh, business plan to a couple of banks and nobody would sign on. Um, <laughs> so we, we didn't get any, you know, uh, we didn't borrow any money that way. So we just took out a loan against our house and um, just a line of credit against our house. And we only went into it for by about $15,000 before things started turning around and the company became um, profitable. And we were like back to break even by the end of the first year. Nice. Um, and, um, you know, we didn't take risks. Um, uh, you know, there is such a thing as risk reward. <laughs> so, we, you know, you know. Uh, so I'm driving Alfa Romeos and not Ferraris. Gets to my next question. I was going to ask what what you do today. I uh, I my brother and my wife and I retired at age fifty. Well, I was I'm the oldest, um, so my brother was, and my wife the same, and um, my brother is two years younger, so we retired at that age, and, you know, retirement is not for everybody, but it works for a lot of people, and so um, I, I do a number of websites for a bunch of different um, um, organizations, including the New England Alpha Mail Club, nice. um, and um, a number of my wife uh, became an artist, and um, so um, I do a website for her, and also a number of her other artist friends. And um, uh, so uh, a bunch of other organizations, and um, I uh, brew all of my own beer, and so I do a website for my beer supply store, and I bake bread, and I put up pickles, and I roast coffee. I just kind of enjoy things. All right, I think this will be my last question. If you could send a message to the 8-bit people, Atari and Commodore and Apple people who uh, used your products back in the day, and some of whom are still out there playing with computerized, if you could send them a message, and you can right now, what would you tell them? Ah, first I'd say thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you for purchasing our products. And I... And I I don't know. I, I, I mean, even I enjoyed using the dance things, <laughs> and I hope you, and I hope you did too. And um, uh, we had a good ride. Um, thank you for riding along with us. And um, weren't those the days? Weren't those the days when, uh, for one thing, we could get our hands on our computers and you know really you know get involved with them and uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> program them at any level that we want and we, we can under, it's like it's like it's like old cars you know they're not they're certainly not as good as the modern ones but they uh, they were uh, understandable and enjoyable and fun to work on and I think the computers are kind of the same yeah so yeah. that's that's my message that's a good analogy cool thank you so much Dave I appreciate your time Okay, um, I'll try to get back to you with some relics. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, um, you know where to find me, and uh, I will uh, make sure yep. that the community sees them. Cool. Thank you so much, Dave. All right, Kevin. Have a great I enjoyed day. enjoyed it. Take care. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed these interviews and would like to contribute something, I encourage you instead to donate to one of our favorite organizations, the Internet Archive, at archive.org. The Internet Archive is a nonprofit digital library with the stated mission of universal access to all knowledge. They've done incredible things to preserve computer history, including hosting thousands of programs in an in-browser Atari emulator, creating the Wayback Machine, and offering full-page scans of countless Atari computer books and magazines. Make your tax-deductible contribution at archive.org donate.